Today on Amateur Kitchen, I'm going to show you how to make the perfect Thanksgiving Day turkey. That's right, it is that time of year again where you're going to the store getting that huge bird and preparing it for your entire family. And I'm going to share with you a few tips and tricks to make that day just a little bit easier. And this is also a very simple and easy recipe along with tasty as well that whether it's your first time doing Thanksgiving dinner or your 15th time doing it for your family, this is a recipe that you can always turn to that will be a huge success. So let's get started on making this Thanksgiving Day turkey. Here we go. is not standing next to me but no worries she'll be on the next video let's get started with talking about this turkey though I have a 10 pound turkey that I already thawed out now they do have a national thaw your turkey day I'm telling you it's the truth it's November 17th so that's kind of the deadline the date that you would like to get your turkey to start thawing it out they say uh, I believe it's for every one day for every four pounds or something like that. If you're anything like my dad and late at everything, no worries, I'm gonna put some tips on there for you last minute people. I know who you are too. And you know who you are too, right? Um, so I have this thought out though. I cleaned it out, I got the neck out and all of that. You could save that for chicken or for turkey stock later on, so don't forget that. Um, rather than wasting anything, we want to be able to use it all, and you could use the carcass after it's cooked. So after we've prepared our turkey, we've thawed it, and I've rinsed it, and I've patted it dry, I have some root vegetables that we're going to actually stuff in there in just a second. And I have a couple of onions, a couple of carrots, some celery, and I didn't worry about peeling the carrots or taking the leaves off the celery or anything like that. Just go ahead and wash it up. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna chop it to be able to sit it, uh, put it inside. Obviously, if you have a bigger turkey, you're gonna use more root vegetables. I'm gonna get started with chopping up some of these and then we'll talk about the herbs in just a second. So as you can see, I filled the cavity with our onions and our celery and carrots and whatnot. And now I'm gonna talk to you just about how we're gonna season the inside with the herbs. Now, I love to buy these. I'm sure you've seen them in your store. Even some of the smaller stores that I visit, they have them as well, or if you grow them, even better. Um, but it's thyme, sage, and rosemary. And this is a perfect combination. You don't have to get the poultry seasoning, the dry stuff. Use this fresh stuff, it's awesome. And all that I'm gonna do, I'm just really gonna take all of this because I want all that flavor. You know what? I might save a couple for the gravy later on of the time. I'm going to save a little bit of the time. But other than that, I'm going to take all of this and we're just going to shove it right in here. And I know I have all those vegetables in there, but I'm going to stick it in there anyways. And we're going to pack this turkey full. All right, so we're rocking and rolling. There's only just a couple more steps left to this easy turkey. Told you it was super simple. I'm taking some butter. Now, depending on how big of a turkey that you have, same with the, um, you know, the vegetables that you put in, will depend on how much you put in. So, um, I only have a 10 pound. Sometimes people go way crazy, you know, get super big ones like 18 pounds. Sometimes if you do that or you want a 20 pounder, sometimes it's easier just to get two 10 pounds. That way it kind of cooks a little bit more evenly. Just, you know, word of advice. I'm gonna take some butter though that is at room temperature and we are gonna start seasoning this turkey. So I'm just gonna rub it all over the top, just like this. And then I'm gonna pick up the skin 
and kind of run my fingers in there to kind of separate it. And then we're gonna put this uh, butter in there as well. And of course, it'd probably be kind of nice if I de blinged And I know they're already messy, but they're gonna get even more messy if I don't do this. Okay, now we can get to business. All right, start sticking your hand all the way in there and get that butter all over. That's gonna flavor it just throughout the whole cooking process. Yes. All right, so I have it nice and buttered up. And again, this is just gonna help it kind of brown and get that yummy flavor all throughout. Now, the only thing left we have to do is season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. And we're just gonna season it all around. As you can tell, I'm not using my traditional salt dispenser, uh, just for the fact that I'm gonna, you know, put my hands in there, in and out, and I don't wanna contaminate the rest of it. So I just poured a little bit of it in a bowl, same with the pepper. And go ahead and season some of the inside, and then we'll do the same with the pepper. Just kind of get it all around. It's going to make that skin nice and good. What's your favorite part? I love the skin, but I, I have to tell you what. My husband loves the skin a lot more than I do, though. So the last thing we need to do is stick this puppy in a bag. And I love these bags. You've probably seen these turkey bags. Uh, they're usually by the aluminum foil and saran wrap and whatnot. Or by the baking aisle, like the spices and stuff. But I got a nice big one. I'm just going to put about a tablespoon of flour in. And I do this because I don't know why. I think my grandma does it or something. My dad. Um, and it might even say on the directions. I just kind of coat it a little bit. And then I let a little bit of the excess out into a garbage bag. And it's just like that. It just kind of coats it. And then I have a big pan that I'm going to set over here. And if you have a rack, you could also put it on the rack as well. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to move my coffee. And I'm just going to take a nice big bird. You know what? It'll probably be easier if I do it like this. Right? I'm going to unwrap it a little bit. This is where you could definitely use another pair of hands. So too bad Miss Maria wasn't here to help me. We're just gonna put this big bird right into here. All the way over. Oh, looks so beautiful. All right, so we have the turkey in here. I'm just gonna take the bag now and I am going to go ahead and seal it nice and tight. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to poke some holes in here to allow for the steam to escape. And that's just super simple. Just take your knife just like this and just poke a few holes down in there. Okay, and last but certainly not least, and it's probably one of the most important things when baking your turkey, is to have one of these thermometers that can kind of reach inside the oven and along with coming out so you don't have to keep opening and closing and opening and closing. And we're just gonna go ahead and stick this in the thigh. And you don't wanna hit the bone, but you wanna go just enough in. That's perfect. That's it. That's how easy this turkey is. I'm gonna put this in the oven at 325 for two hours. And anything over 10 pounds, I want you to bake it for an additional 15 minutes per pound. So I'm gonna head over to the stove Watch this for a couple of hours, and I'll see you right back to let you know what to do next. So our turkey is coming along great. All this what I did was I just put a little slice in there, and I turned the heat up to about 400, and that's going to help make that skin a little bit more crispy. So we're going to let the turkey bake for an additional hour. After your turkey is done baking, be sure to set it aside for about 15-20 minutes before cutting into it just to allow for all those juices to redistribute. Otherwise, if you cut it right away, you're gonna have a dry turkey and nobody likes a dry turkey. But if you do, we do have some tips and tricks for you to help it get a little bit more moist again on our website, amateurkitchen.tv. So hopefully that can be your spot for all your Thanksgiving Day recipes. We have everything from side dishes, main dishes, desserts, you name it, we have it. So take a look at it. Our website again is amateurkitchen.tv. 
And Maria and I want you to head to our Facebook page as well, facebook.com slash amateur kitchen. And we want you to click that like button so you can follow us every day. I wish you and your family a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope that I've helped you out. And if you have any questions in the meantime, be sure to send them my way on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, our website, uh, email, you name it. I will try and answer it. So have a great day. And I want to see you right back here again next time on Amateur Kitchen. See you later.